So we're solving for the maximum acceleration and velocity of a block oscillating on the end of an ideal spring. And there's two key issues that we have to keep in mind as we go through this problem. The first issue is the block's maximum velocity and acceleration occur at two completely different points. The second is that even though velocity and acceleration are closely related through kinematics, uh, we have to solve for each of these two quantities in two completely different ways. Kinematics won't connect them together in this problem. And I'll explain why that is as we go through this. Now, starting with the maximum acceleration of the block. If you look at the forces acting on the block, it's only the force by the spring that causes the block to accelerate. Now the equation that governs the force by an ideal spring is called Hooke's Law, which tells us that the force by the spring is equal to negative kx, where k is what we call the spring constant. That's really just the stiffness of the spring. x is how far the spring has been stretched or compressed from equilibrium, or its natural length. Now the negative tells us that if the block is pushed to the left, then the spring is going to be pushing on the block to the right, and vice versa. It's easiest to see if you graph the force by the spring as a function of the block's position. You'll see when the block is to the left of equilibrium, the spring is pushing back to the right. Now, because the spring is the only thing pushing the block around, we're going to take that equation, or Hooke's law, and substitute it into Newton's second law for the block. So really, we just have the force by the spring causing the block's mass to accelerate. Now, rearranging this, we can get an equation for the acceleration of the block. Now going back to the graph, you'll see the farther the block gets from equilibrium, the greater the force by the spring becomes. And what that means is as the block gets farther and farther away from equilibrium, the acceleration of the block is going to increase. So the maximum acceleration of the block is going to occur when the block is the farthest away from equilibrium that it ever reaches, or what we'd call its maximum amplitude. So in order to solve for the maximum acceleration of the block, we need to take the maximum amplitude of the block and substitute that in as our position in solving for the acceleration of the block. And now we have a function for the maximum acceleration of the block. Now, moving on to velocity, this is where people start to get confused. See, we used force to solve for acceleration, but we're not going to use force to solve for velocity. And I know it's tempting to try to connect velocity and acceleration together using the kinematic equations. That's like one of the first things you learn in physics. The problem is our equation for acceleration is position dependent and kinematics are dependent on time. So the kinematics don't fit in here. They won't make the jump for us. Instead, what we have to do is we have to turn to energy in order to solve for the maximum velocity. Now, there's two types of energy that we have to deal with here. There's the energy in the spring, which we call elastic potential energy. That's given by the equation 1 half kx squared. k is still the spring constant, and x is still the distance the spring has been stretched from equilibrium. We also have kinetic energy. That's the energy associated with the block's velocity. That's 1 half mv squared. m is the mass of the block, and v is how fast it's moving, or its velocity. Now, when the block starts at its maximum amplitude, all the energy is stored in the spring. Or we could say the system starts with some energy, 1 half k a squared. Remember, a is the amplitude, or the greatest distance the block ever reaches from equilibrium. Now, as the block gets pushed forward, some of that energy in the spring is going to transfer into kinetic energy of the block. And as the block moves farther and farther toward equilibrium, more and more of that energy is going to turn into kinetic energy. Now, by the time the block gets to equilibrium, or more importantly, the spring gets to equilibrium, no energy is going to be stored in the spring. All of that energy will have turned into kinetic energy, which means when the block passes through equilibrium, the block will be traveling at its maximum velocity. Once it moves past equilibrium, the spring is going to start to slow down the block, taking kinetic energy away from the block and turning it back into elastic potential. But right at equilibrium, we can say that the energy that started in the spring, that's 1 half Ka squared, is going to have all turned into the kinetic energy of the block, 1 half mv squared. So setting those two quantities equal to each other, we can rearrange them to get an expression for the maximum velocity of the block. So looking at the big picture here, while the equations for the maximum acceleration and velocity aren't that hard to come up with, 
it's important to understand that the maximum acceleration occurs at the endpoints of oscillation because that's where the force by the spring is the greatest. But the maximum velocity occurs at equilibrium because that's where all of the energy in the system is kinetic, meaning the block is moving the fastest at that point. So, I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.